Amen. We greet the brethren who are here present and the ones who, who are also watching us on YouTube with the peace of the Lord Jesus. I'd like to invite all the everyone to stand up. We're going to open our Bibles in the book of First Kings. First Kings chapter eighteen. First Kings eighteen. First Kings chapter eighteen. We are going to read from verse 30. <coughs> Amen. Is everyone found? First King 18, 30 says the following. Then Jesus said to all the people, Come near to me. So all the people came near to him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took twelve stones, according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of God, the Lord had come, saying, Israel shall be your name. Then with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord. And he made a trench around the altar large enough to hold two seeds of seed, seeds of seed. And he put the wood in order, cut the bull in peace, and laid it on the wood, and said, Fill four water pots with water, and put it on the burnt sa uh, sacrifice and on the wood. Then he said, Do it a second time, and they did it a second time. And he said, Do it a third time, and they did it a third time. So the water ran all around the altar and he also filled the trench with water and it came the, to pass as the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said Lord of God and Abram and Isaac and Israel let it be known this the day that you are God in Israel and I am your servant and that I have done all these things at your word, hear my Lord, hear me, that these people may know that you are the Lord of God, then that, that you have turned this heart back to you again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and, and the dust, and it licked up the water the water that was in the trench. Now, when all the people saw it, they fell on their feet, their face, and said, "The Lord, He is God. The Lord is God." My brethren, the church may be seated. This is a text that we just read, which is very important for the life of the church, because it shows to us and sets up for us everything that is the life of a servant in obedience to God. When we go back a little bit on chapter 17, in the beginning of chapter 18, we're going to see that Israel was going through a moment where they were disobeying the commandments of the Lord. They were being influenced by the Queen Jezebel, who was not Israelite. She was pagan, and she brought this pagan teaching, she brought to inside of Israel teachings and adoration to idols. And the people now began to lean towards that direction of adoring idols and not only adoring the God of Israel. So now the prophet Elijah, he had on his hands, he took on his hands a great responsibility of leading the people back once again to believe and only serve the God of Israel. He could not allow this situation 
the people of God to go towards a different direction. And in our answer to what the Lord was speaking to him, Elijah, he calls all the prophets of Baal who were uh, a, a, a spiritual religion that was pagan. They adored idols. They idol Baal, the god Baal. And now Elijah, he conclaims all the prophets of Baal and now he casts down a challenge. He says, let us build an altar to God. You build your own altar according to the way you have your own traditions and I'll make my own altar the way I have learned on how to serve the Lord of Israel. So, Look, this was a challenge that was completely uneven. It was a man against 400. There were also others. It was more or less 800 prophets against a single prophet. And it was not a, a battle. It was conventional, like we see, a war with weapons, with guns, with missiles, missiles with cannons and warships no it was it was not a human battle it was a, not a physical battle it was it was a challenge that was completely spiritual it was nothing that would depend on resources or knowledge or something that even uh, something that would involve human effort the matter was spiritual, and that was it. It was Prophet Elijah. I made complete gear towards the things of the Lord against more than 400 prophets of Baal. So then he suggested the following. I'm going to call the people. I'm going to the Mount Carmel, and we're going to sacrifice two lambs. and going to choose your lamb. I'm going to put this lamb wherever you want. And there you're going to plead to your God. And afterwards, I'm going to plead to my God. The God the God who answers with fire is the true God. Isn't it true? Okay. Is it right? It's right. So the word tells us that after verse 22, right around there, you will see that the prophet, uh, prophets of Baal, they positioned themselves in the way that they thought was right to serve their God. They made sacrifice and began to pray. They began to plead. And the hours began to pass and people was watching. They were waiting. And the hours passed and soon noon came and nothing. And then Elijah said, hey, maybe you should cry out a little louder. Maybe your God is busy, he's not listening. You know? so, so then plead a little louder. And they did it. They started pleading louder and then began to cut themselves up as a blood sacrifice, shedding their own blood, and nothing happened. And now the word tells us that after many attempts, Elijah now picks up the lamb. This is the text that we just read. And now, now Elijah, he places, he repairs the altar of God. He picks up the stones, picks up the wood and everything according. He already knew, according to what the people knew, how to offer praises to the Lord. And he made, made a, a like a ditch around the altar, and poured water upon the altar over over the stone, the lamb, or the woods, and everything. And now Elijah, after having done all this, after having restored the altar, which was uh, broken and was not being used, because the people didn't want to pray to God. The people was completely turned to 
God Baal. They were offering praises to a God that was foreign, a God that they did not know as an influence of Queen Jezebel. But now, everything that, uh, after everything being correct, Jesus, Elijah prays to God. And that's the text that we just read. And Elijah says a prayer to God. And he said, and then when he made the offer, Prophet Elijah said, O Lord, God of Abraham, of Isaac and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel, and I am your servant, and that I have done all these things at your word. My brethren, and the word says that a fire came down from heaven and consumed the entire altar, Cons destroyed the sacrifice, <coughs> and even boiled the water. And everything God answered with a great power to the point that the people that was watching for them to say, the Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. My brethren, we're beginning another year. We already passed the finished 2023. It's been more than a week, uh, like a week now. Now we're beginning the first week of 2024, and we still have 51 more weeks. We have a great challenge ahead of us, a great challenge. But what is going to define what God, if God is going to operate in your life, what is going to define if God is going to operate in your home, in your professional life, in your spiritual life, what is going to define if God is going to answer your prayers is your way of uh, offering praises to the Lord. It's not enough for you to have a structure the same way that they did. The prophets of Baal had, an, had a structure. They had everything. They prayed. They pleaded. They made sacrifices. They even went flagella. 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 <laughs> that word. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like they uh, they hurt themselves. They had the whole structure, but they were in the dependency of a God that they did not know. They depended, and they were pleading to a God that would never answer them. So. It's not possible for us to spend a whole year with the Bible on our hands, singing songs of praise, coming to the church, speaking about Jesus, speak, saying that God is love, that God saves, that God's everything, God's hope, that God is mercy. If you don't have a life in God's author, Elijah, the first thing that he did was to put in order, order the altar. Elijah, he restored the altar of God completely. It was the first thing, and the first thing that we need to do this year, independently on what your life was in 2023, if you want to have a different year, if you want to see God operating in your life, you need to restore the altar. If you want to see the same operation of God this year, if you want to see the same manifestation of God in your, to your benefit, you need to restore the altar. And you need to obey the Lord. Because without obedience, <coughs> without a life in the dependency of the Lord, you're not going to have an answer. We are not going to have the operation of God. There's not going to be a miracle. 
is not going to be the answer to your prayers. That is, it's not worth. It's not worth. They, had, those men, they had everything. They had the sacrifice, the prayer, the bell prophets. They had everything. They even <laughs> did too much. As man begins to think that he can do all things, when man begins to allow the oppression of God and begin begin to believe that because he's good, because he does the sacrifice, he mutilate himself because if he thinks then that's wrong we are nothing we're sinners we're flawed we are needy and we need God's action in our lives the self harm what does it do when you hurt yourself, it shows the flesh. It shows, shows the sin. It shows what is inside. It shows what is inside of you that no one sees. And man, many times in their disobedience to God, man does this. Man thinks that because he has structure, but he is in sin. He is in disobedience that God is going to operate. It's not going to happen. You may pray. You may come to the church. You may have your name written and the list of members of Maranatha Church, but this is worthless. Elijah now, when he takes on, he, he restored the altar. What is the altar of God? It is the place of adoration. The altar is the place of sacrifice. We're not going to enter into details here of what it means, the stones, the 12 stones, the 12 tribes, the Gospels, and the ones who have been called the disciples. No, <coughs> we're not going to enter into details, otherwise we would be here. It's like a, it's a Bible study, but no, we quickly we just wanted to show the following. That in order for man to be victorious, he needs to have a belief in God's author. He needs to be connected to the call, to the discipleship. He needs to be connected to the Lamb, to the sacrifice of Jesus, to the Lamb of Jesus that was shed on the cross. It's not our sacrifice. It's not our blood. It's not our effort. But it is everything that is geared towards the spiritual side. And we need to restore this. And what it is to restore the author? And what is to have a life in God's presence? What is to have a life in the house of God? What it is to have a life in an author? It's having a life according to God's will. We have everything. We do. Have structure like many have. We're not speaking about anyone else. We're not. We don't want to criticize anybody. We're speaking about us. It's us. Our concern is with which one who entered here tonight. We are not here calling out church, other denominations by name, or A, B, or C. None of it. We are speaking about a year that we're going to have ahead of us. And we're speaking about a, a life in God's presence. You may call yourself Maranatha. You may claim that you know the Bible and that you know all the songs from the songbook. But if you don't have a life in obedience to the Lord, if you're not placing every day your life in God's altar, restoring God's altar, in the presence of God, obeying what He has said that has already been established, what is being revealed to us, you will plea, you're going to pray, and maybe God may God may God may not hear you. Surely God's not going to hear you. But when you took a stand of a servant of God, that was Elijah's prayer. He said, Lord, here's the author. My life is in your presence, Lord. 
I don't believe that I could do anything for myself and I don't expect anything for myself but I am your servant the altar is here the lamb the wood the stones the water which you, which represents the spirit we have everything Lord I am a servant so I depend and I live for you you are our God you are our Savior and my brethren this should be our prayer this year we are poor and needy but we have a God who is alive the God that answers we have a God that looks to us with a gaze of mercy and at the right time in God's time he sends his people that was the prayer of Elijah Lord here it is everything is here I am your servant my brethren this year the Lord has promised victories but we need to be uh, have the right position in God's presence it's you in your home you know the Bible yes I do you know spiritual gifts yes I do do you know the means of grace yes I do do you know the importance of being in the service yes I do do you understand the importance of keeping the Word of God in your heart yes I do but now the question is are you prioritizing this are you leaving this are you going to leave this this year are you going to present to God and leave as a servant of God in obedience to the Lord in the dependency to God if you do this my brother and sister God will operate in a mighty way God's going to operate in your life God's going to operate in your home God's going to operate in you at work in your physical life in our spiritual life and everyone will say when they look to your testimony when they the people see the person of God in your life they will say only God only the Lord is God only the Lord is God here's my place in God's presence because the Holy Spirit is being poured out the Lamb is there the blood of Jesus was shed for us and today we have access to God's presence there's no other way my brethren no other way for you to be vic victorious this year if you do not place in God's author your life and you leave and living a life in dependency of the Holy Spirit may the Lord bless you this way in this way and as we sing a song you, we ask that you in prayer to the Lord that you may ask for God to have strength that you may ask for understanding that you are a servant and that he is the Lord and that we are going to go and that we need and we should live in the dependency of the Holy Spirit may God bless us let's sing a song
Blessed be the name of the Lord. I invite the church to stand up once again. Our brethren, we have, we have everything. It's not because we are better than anyone else or because we are uh, super Christians. No. We have everything because one day God revealed himself to us. And we need, through revelation, we need to understand the project. While many understand through human reason, we need to be able to reach revelation, the revelation of God. We have the word, we have the doctrine, we have the lamb, we have the the gap that was was dug in which determines the limits of the spirit that sets up how far we need to go as the servants of God and our place is in God's house in God's author that was restored it's not a broken author or made in our own fashion no it is an author that was restored according to God's will so this year is a year of great challenge, but the Lord will answer them. Whoever is obedient, whoever is experiencing this, they will see and they will hear and they will receive help from the Lord. We're going to have a word of glorification to the Lord. I want to praise you for your love towards us because we are in your house we praise the Lord because you are a, a, a blessing God good God because you took care of our lives in such a special way we praise you Lord because your love touched our heart we praise you for everything in the name of Jesus the Lord was showing a couple of spiritual gifts before the service and in one of those gifts the Lord was showing a woman that is here and she has always been very independent from her youth. She always tried to be self-sufficient, but now with time, she realizes that this only brought suffering to her. And the only thing that is being answer to being fair to her life is her ego, but it has caused other people to be pushed away from her and this has caused her to become very lonely and she says oh I don't need anyone else I'm a, a person that is very good but now tonight the Lord is saying you're wrong we need to go back to the Lord we need to depend it yes but depend it on God a Christian a servant of God he needs to live in the dependency of a God that answers and a God that is alive. Because we are, we are nobody. Self-sufficiency. I say I can, I can do it. And everything that we do here, the only guarantee that we have is death. And without God, it is terrible. Death without God is really worthless. But the Lord is giving tonight an opportunity. Everything that we do, if we do according to the will of God, we are going to have a sure victory. The Lord has also shown another man another special gift. And this man is more or less in the same situation. <coughs> Surely he is a man that is a Christian, evangelical, and he knows everything, but he does not allow himself to be taken control by the Holy Spirit. He limits the operation of God. He wants to do things according to his own mind, but he's unable because it's difficult. No matter how good we are, we'll never be able to achieve salvation because the only way for man to go to God is through the sacrifice of Jesus. 
And tonight is giving the Lord is giving us this warning, especially to this man and this woman, but to all of us. Because what leads us to God's presence is a life of obedience. Amen. Let us pray, bring the service to a close, and you in your heart need to place your life in God's author, asking to God that we may have a year of victories like He promised. And as always, the will of the Lord. But for this, we need to be in the right place. And the right place is in God's presence. Lord, we want at this moment, we want to glorify your name, Lord, and offer to you our adoration, our service, in praise is to you. And to ask the Lord that we may have a year of victories in in God's presence and that we may never look back or look to the sides, Lord, and that we may never look to man or man's flaws or any human leadership, but we may only look to you, Lord, and that we may have our gaze towards heaven because that's where, Lord, our, our answer comes from and in high place in the author that we'll be able to see the operation of God and that's why we ask for faith we need to have energy and disposition and understanding so that our lives may be alive in your presence and this is the prayer that we say I'm really thankful and now we ask for a blessed week a week in which we may be see may be able to see the ministration of your spirit in our behalf and that on the weekend lord we may be in that seminar for once again receive your teaching and that we may study up, study up our steps in your presence where we pray thankful to you in the name of jesus amen in your name we say that wonderful grace of our lord and savior jesus christ the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations and the gifts of the Holy Spirit may be poured out upon all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. We are coming to the end of the service, and if you desire a prayer and assistance, we are here available to the Dickens pastors and ushers so that you may leave this place. You may leave this place, but you may never leave God's presence. My brother, would like to remind you that for our seminar, we're going to begin uh, fasting and early dawns on behalf of this event, so that the Lord may operate it in a mighty way in this seminar. We are going, not going to have services this coming weekend. We're going to be Saturday and Sunday in Orlando. So schedule yourself up and even informing your visitors that have been at attending here not to come. Anything else? The brand who are going by bus, please go to Marco Aurelio so to get more information regarding this departure by bus. We're going to be leaving from the door here at the church. Amen. I wish everyone the peace of the Lord Jesus.